Welcome back everyone. In this video, we'll be talking about getting back your five to 10% of FPS after an NVIDIA bug that broke the drivers. And this comes after I saw the video from Jay's Two Cents and decided to do some testing. But also in this video, I'll explain what rebar is, how it works, and how to make sure it's enabled. Now, what had happened? Turns out that one of the latest NVIDIA drivers basically incorrectly disabled rebar on Intel computers. But if you're an AMD user, you should still follow the instructions and make sure that it's turned on. Now, rebar is a technology and a feature which has been around since the 10th generation of Intel processors and the Ryzen 3000. And what it allows is it allows the CPU to more effectively send data to the graphics card from the memory. Now it speeds up the performance in the games, but also it gets better when you subscribe to the channel and leave a like. But honestly, here's what happens. As your computer is creating the graphics and sending them through the CPU and the memory to the GPU before it's shown on the screen, with the old configuration without rebar, the pipe is basically very tiny and it can't send as much data as quickly. With rebar enabled, you've got a big wide pipe that can send a lot more data, removing stutters and improving your performance. This technology has been around since the Ryzen 3000 series and the Intel 10th gen CPUs. What you've got to do is install the drivers and make sure NVIDIA profiler is enabled and then you force the rebar to be turned on. Now jump to the five minute and 30 second mark for the instructions, but meanwhile, I'll compare the difference between rebar off, which you're seeing on the screen in Call of Duty, and I'm fast forwarding through the benchmark here, but the difference is actually not huge, but significant enough to affect your performance. Now this run is, you know, three times the speed, just so that you guys know I'm not messing around here. And here's the results. We get 113 average FPS and 86 FPS as our low 1% and 95 as our low 5%. So remember 113 FPS. Now we've turned on rebar. All the settings are still the same. This is on a 4090 in 4K high settings. And if you look at the bottom, our FPS is actually hitting 120, 130. Now let's take a look at the results. And they're pretty impressive. We've gone to 120 FPS average from 113, 99 versus 95, 91 versus 86. Now this is not a huge jump, but it's seven to 10 FPS and it varies depending on your video card. So for example, cards with less than 16 gigabytes of memory will take a lot more advantage of this. Now this is Ghost Recon Wildlands. It's an older game, but this will show you that rebar also applies to older games as well. Ghost Recon is from 2017, I believe. Now you guys can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. And that was a run with the rebar turned off. 123 FPS average. And if you note, the CPU usage was about 18%. Now we're gonna rerun it one more time with rebar turned on. And here we go. Let's take a look at the difference. And again, you're not going to get like a 50% improvement, but it is significant enough that for some people, it will be anywhere from 5% all the way up to 15%. And it's worthwhile to turn on if you've got a video card that supports it and a motherboard and BIOS that supports it as well. So here's our results. We've gone from 123 to 137 and our CPU usage also dropped 16% versus 18%. Why? It's because rebar makes it more efficient for the CPU to talk to your video card. So what about DCS World? This is for the flight sim folks. Now DCS World is a little trickier. It is a massive game. And if you look at the FPS on the right, that's with rebar on versus rebar off, it's not a huge difference. In some scenarios, you might be seeing three, five, in some cases, 10 FPS more. But again, this is on a 4090 where I've got lots of memory and lots of textures can reload. And as I said, what rebar does is it more effectively transfers the data from your RAM and your hard drive into your GPU. So if your GPU is 16 gigs, 12 gigs or eight gigs and supports rebar and it's working properly, well, it'll improve how quickly that data can transfer into your video card, removing stutters and improving performance. So I've hopped back into DCS. Now I'm flying in the Tomcat and we're doing side by side again. Rebar on is on the right, rebar off is on the left. And we're not looking for a huge difference again 
5, 10% tops. And you can hit pause and look at the numbers. In some cases with rebar, it will be less efficient. Not by much, but usually there's a slight improvement or at least the same performance. And remember, DCS is a 12 year old game. On a big map like the Germany map here, there is a tiny bit of improvement. But again, if you have less video memory than 16 gigs or 16 gigs of RAM on your VRAM, this will actually be much more of an improvement for you because the CPU can more effectively transfer the data. Just like you should make sure you subscribe and uh, leave a like on this video because then YouTube likes to share it to other people. So NVIDIA Profile Inspector, download it, launch it, and then scroll down to section five. See, there's section two and you just scroll down and look for section five. And in section five, you're going to look for a couple of rebar options. First off, rebar enable. What you wanna do is you wanna find that line and toggle it to be enabled. Your next setting is going to the rebar options. That's two down below from there. And you want to toggle that into the on position as well. Now the next one is rebar size limit. This is a hexadecimal number, which basically takes it to one gigabyte. That's what that 000004 is. You can increase that number at your own risk, but 000004 is kind of the preferred size for most video cards. After this, you can hit apply changes and then you need to do a restart. And of course you need to go into your BIOS and make sure your rebar is enabled in the BIOS because if it's not enabled, well, there's no point turning this on. Also, if you think you've screwed something up, you can click on the little NVIDIA logo in the top of the NVIDIA profile inspector. And from there, you can reset it back to default. There you have it, guys. Quick overview of rebar, what it does, and I'll catch you in the next video.